Hi, Sukanya. How are you doing today? Hello, Shani ma'am. Good morning. I'm doing good. <laughs> Weather in Bangalore nice. is really nice today. It's very nice. Must be getting cold now. Yeah. A little it's cold. Nice. All right. Perfect. So thank you so much, Sukanya, for joining us today. And as a part of our alumni interview, in which we try to get your experience and share it with the upcoming or the aspiring data analysts so that they can prepare themselves well and they get more tips and tricks in order to crack the interviews. So let me ask uh, the first question that is, uh, let's talk about your educational background. What have you done in education? Okay, so I started my uh, educations with uh, graduation in statistics. I did my BSc honors in statistics from Bethune College, which is under University of Calcutta. After that, I did my master's in structural science uh, from University of Madras. All and right. Then I came into IV for the data science course. So let me ask you this thing that uh, I, if I remember correctly, you were still studying in your master's when you joined IV. Right. So why was that like typically you know a lot of people they finish their masters or their bachelors and or they're working and then they join IV so what triggered this that okay let me join IV while I'm in mid masters that was a uh, while I was doing it so what happened is my voice equal yeah no no I'm fine it's coming correctly okay uh, so uh Thinking about my future career, I was like, I need to be specialized with something which I want to get into. That's where uh, I was Googling uh, uh, stuff uh, to where to get this data science course from. Since I have a background from statistics as uh, already. So I had this knowledge of data science and artificial intelligence and everything. So where I wanted to go. And that's where I came and uh, knew about IV. And uh, I thought that... Uh, after completing the master's or after getting into a job, then doing a course is way better than while I'm studying only, I can study this as well, which would uh, let me uh, finish, like come up to a career fast. Mm -hmm. Don't have to waste a time separately because working and pursuing a course, I would say is very difficult. It has been seen that people tend to uh, leave the courses half done they don't yeah. attend the classes properly they'll be like i uh, they mostly prefer weekends mm -hmm. and then they'll come up with some uh, certain other plans so yeah. they don't go good so if i wanted to pursue it wholeheartedly and wanted a career on this so right. that's why I was like, since I'm studying, so I'll study this as well. All together, I'll complete, like my master's will also get complete and the course will also get complete. And I will have a good <laughs> career. And I think you got a job before you actually graduated from yeah, the college. Yeah, right, right, right. And I remember the sleepless nights when you were worried about, I'm not getting a job, I'm not getting an yeah, interview. Like, I like, used to <laughs> I used to call and uh, like placements were going on and since it was a COVID time so not much of placements happened mm -hmm. that time I was not even done with my fourth semester when I uh, was like uh, I'm not getting a job I'm not getting a job so Nali ma'am used to re uh, like she used to counsel me every week maybe like Sukanya, have patience. Sukanya, have patience. <laughs> Trust me, you'll land up into a much, much better thing. Right. So, All right. Yes, and it paid. I think you will agree. It paid your patience. Paid. Yeah. Yes. All right, Sukanya. Which course did you take up at IV? I took data science with uh, big data. Hadoop. All right. With Hadoop. Okay. And how do you think or what parts of this particular program helped you to get your first job? Uh, then let me start with the program. So I started with uh, Excel and R simultaneously together. It was hmm. the uh, program, the modules I joined together since I had a, a background from uh, coding and all. So uh, I got the R. So uh, Subhujit sir used to take it. So the these modules are uh, designed in such a way, like it 
peak uh, picks uh, everyone's uh, from the base it start building the base just and it takes little bit higher 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 and then it completely okay. makes i would say it completely makes a uh, what to say i a professional uh, expert mm -hmm. everything which you would need in a company would be taught and is right. very Hmm. Uh, uh, with that, there are regular assignments, assessments, projects, other things, which also made me groom myself more and understand the, uh, or like we worked with the original data and all certain assignments were given. So those things also uh, built up the thinking, like thinking mentality of mm -hmm. how to think and how to uh, answer regular uh, seminars were uh, done from Pratik sir used to uh, do take of the seminars mm -hmm. for TV building then uh, guesstimate questions everything so these uh, this course was a complete thing which anyone would need to be a professional expert in data science I would say wonderful and uh, tell me about the first job Nielsen right yeah <laughs> So what rounds were there? How were you able to cope up with it? And what did you, you know, take away from that job for your next job? So I joined Nielsen as a research associate. I got the job from IV only. <laughs> so uh, uh, there first, uh, there were total three rounds. First mm -hmm. round was a aptitude round where uh, questions, uh, a link was given. And within that question, certain questions were they given uh, related to Excel, uh, statistics english and other stuffs were also there mm -hmm. that was the aptitude after cracking that aptitude there was a technical test they they shared the link of the question paper gave the answer script also and uh, a video, over a video only video call only uh, the that interview that technical interview was taken it was uh, that was on excel purely yeah, excel mostly on excel yeah right and uh, uh, IV also gave the interview preparation for that. Like it always does. Like anywhere where uh, we get selected or whichever company we, uh, we apply and we get selected, IV always provides the interview preparation for that particular company based on whatever would be asked. Correct. So that was that. That also helped me because Nielsen has this thing of using certain formulas which other don't use. Like mm -hmm. I, uh, offset. Some, yeah, offset address <laughs> these are there which other don't we don't uh, use typically in yes. we yeah. always look for uh, either uh, we look up or a uh, h look up like, apart from those things so that where uh, i we help because uh, the technical questions were almost most of the questions were from those particular formulas only mm -hmm. So that was there. And after cracking the technical round, there was the final uh, round with uh, directly the director of the GRC, that is Global Reporting Center of Nielsen. And that was uh, mostly of a behavioral round. She was asked, uh, like certain questions were asked about my background, me, okay with uh, switching, uh, like the location wise mm -hmm. things. And after that, it, it, it got, got the job. You spent about one year in Nielsen. Yeah. And now you're working with OSB Group. Hmm. So tell us a little bit about your company, what it does, and uh, what were the interview rounds in, at OSB? So uh, OSB, I would say it's a, a financial uh, service uh, group. It's uh, basically, it started with Kent Reliance Building hmm. Society. So it's a main uh, market is of mortgage market. It right. has been uh, supporting a stable retail servicing franchise for mostly more than uh, 150 to 200 years. So I'm a part of that. Uh, now what happened, uh, firstly, it started with Kent Reliance uh, Building Society. Mm -hmm. Acquired certain other uh, companies as well, like Chartered was there, then... Uh, uh, most other uh, some other companies were also mm -hmm. there throughout the process, and then finally they uh, collabed with CCFS, and then it became OSB Group. Right. 
and uh, my uh, like best takeaway from nelson was uh, the uh, skills um, i would not say most skills but certain uh, pro uh, projects which i worked with apart from reporting uh, suppose uh, in the data science we had a project of prediction mm -hmm. that helped me uh, that was the best takeaway from nelson and obviously, it's my first, so it gave me a touch of the corporate life, how it would be, Correct. how to deal with corporate And the life. kind of global team that you work with at Nielsen, yeah. Yeah. that's, I yeah. think, it's a good learning environment. Yeah, that Excellent is. mentors yeah. over there. Very nice. Like the, uh, I, and in fact, I had the experience to work with two different teams. Initially, when I joined, I joined in the Italy team. So I used to uh, date yeah. Italian, uh, like Italy clients. Yeah. Uh, have uh, uh, client liaisons from Italy. And within, it was not even within six months, it was just five months. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Germany's team lead approached me to join his hmm. region. And then I shifted to Germany. So I had that uh, conversation thing came from there only, like uh, understanding their conversation, having. Right. Uh, like the action which they so that also mattered because now Absolutely. is a uk based company so we don't it's not a client base so we have our seniors and my manager and team lead from uk so in a regular basis i have to sit with them understand them how they talk because conversation is the main thing which we need yes. to understand Absolutely. In today's time, when we pretty much all are like a virtual, big virtual team sitting any, in any part of the world, we are sitting together and working now. So definitely communication, easy, easily able to communicate and converse with each other becomes very important. Right. All right. So Kalia, one last question is, uh, can you also guide if anybody wants to join OSB, how to prepare, what are the rounds of interview, what are the you know main tools that they're looking for? Sure. So uh, always we mainly work with SAS, mainly SAS, but it's not that we don't use other uh, tools. We work in Python, SQL as well. Excel is also there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mostly SQL, Python, and uh, SAS. All right. The tools so, which they look for. So what about the interviews questions? What about the interview rounds that you went through? So the first round was uh, normal. Uh, not a normal, but a kind of behavioral and technical mm -hmm. round. Okay. With my uh, location manager. So he asked me certain stuffs about me. He was checking that whether I would be a good fit for the role or not. So right. certain questions regarding my background, about my knowledge in uh, uh, what they are looking for, especially credit risk model, mm -hmm. operation models, those things. Okay. After that, there was a screening round where I was given a case study. All right. So I had to uh, solve the case study, send it back. And the third round was when that case study got accepted. So question completely, that was a final round and com most 80, 90% of a technical and 10% mm -hmm. of my stakeholder having some behavioral questions. So that round was completely on the case study, which I was given. Well, how I solved it, what was my logic behind solving it like that, why mm -hmm. I not solve it in another way. So what would have been the situation if it would have been solved in certain yes. other ways? So tell me when you got this case study, was it mentioned that, okay, you use this particular tool or uh, only no. the case study and the business question was given to you? That was a business question. Uh, no data were given. Okay. Uh, I did not have to use any tools. All right. Basically, they wanted to know about certain distributions which could be used for a PD model or a LGD model or an EAD model. Okay. But validation, since I'm completely into validation, mm -hmm. so uh, development is a different thing. So validation, what all uh, distributions can be used for checking and validation purpose. Mm -hmm. It was the case study was mainly based on that. So in so I would say that in always being mainly if you are good in finance finance domain has to be a little stronger because if you talk about the 
LGD model and the PD model, then you know people should even be able to understand these terminology. What is default and what is uh, yeah, you know, yeah, right. And these right. these terminologies have to be. So if you're coming from a financial background yeah. with the combination of analytics, then OSB would be a good choice. Yeah, and even uh, and distributions also, and that comes from a statistics background, like yes. normal distribution or a Poisson distribution of a or a negative binomial, whatever it is. Okay. So knowledge is also needed. And since I was preparing for other companies as well, uh, because I was switch, I was planning to switch. Mm -hmm. so I was, uh, I was uh, preparing for HS. So it's a kind of similar. And IV, I would say, helped me a lot. It took mock interviews for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Ch uh, Chanchala, I guess. She took Chanchal, me. yeah. Chanchal does that in the team. Yeah. She took my mock interviews. Two to three mock interviews she took because I was come getting depressed day by day when I was not able to crack the interviews. I wasn't uh, sure that what am I going wrong with. Either it's the technical part or the behavioral part. So that was there. So she took my mock interviews and she said that nothing is much wrong with uh, my technical part or my behavioral part. But she gave me certain suggestions mm -hmm. like how to prepare it for or what questions mainly look into for okay. economics or the statistical parts or tool wise, which tool I should be more uh, focused on. on. Yeah. That she helped me out with. And after that only I got, uh, actually, uh, OSB was my last one. First, mm -hmm. I like Ikra, then Ford, and then OSB. Then OSB. <laughs> you know, sometimes it happens that we feel that we are prepared for the interview, but these interviews are so less in our life that we're never well prepared for them. So these mock interviews, they really help you to do an introspection of, okay, where am I lagging? Yeah. Some people are so good in technical skill set, like the knowledge wise, they are so good. But when it comes to expressing, students are not able to express very well. So all these mock interviews, kind of going through the interview videos on our YouTube channel, that really helps students to prepare well for the interviews. Right. So I feel by talking to you, Sukhanen, that you kind of have got your, uh, you know, good combination job right now where you have statistics, your finance, your analytics, everything that you love about what you studied and what you yeah, have and done. Even, so, uh, even the modules which I learned in IV, I can completely use here. Yes. So I feel that when I talk to you and when you're talking to me, this is there, this is there, I can feel that, you know, everything has come together. To the kind of work that you were always looking for. Right. <laughs> Absolutely delighted. So very nice, Sukanya. Thank you again for joining us today and uh, giving your valuable suggestions, uh, telling us, you know, your experience, your journey and how Ivy helped you. So thank you once again and wish you all the best for your future. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Take care, Sukanya. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye.